All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. You know, there's a whole lot of um, interesting things that happen just uh, behind the camera, a whole lot of things <laughs> that Messi gets to do or gets to see, and my director saying lots of wonderful things in my ear sometimes. But let's just uh, leave it at that one day we'll just be able to present to you some of these things, you know, the BTS and all of that. But Messi, you have um, the next um, session. We'll start off with the leadership <laughs> newspaper. We do have Open Abon Kataria. He's on standby. Uh, he joins the conversation in no time. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast this morning. Thank you, Messi. Thank you, Justin. And uh, good morning, Nigeria. Yeah, good morning to you. Let's take a look at the front page of the leadership newspaper. and The attention will be on the bold stories. It talks about uh, the party primaries. Ahead of party primaries, CSOs, that's civil society organization, kicks against aspirants' use of state resources for campaign. That's boldly written on the leadership. Underneath, Northern groups decry hijack of political space by some actors. We don't want government of continuity. AFC, ACF is quoted. We have aspirants with empty promises. Fennifer is, uh, is quoted on that, telling Nigerians. Amechi Saraki Peter B intensifies campaign for party tickets. These are the writers you find underneath the bold caption. And just away from that, uh, another caption says, ASU ends warning strike to decide next line of actions. Now we also have reporter Vila saying, uh, ASU might just end back on an indefinite strike. Some other persons are saying the presidency or the president had approved a certain amount of uh, you know, money for ASU to end the strike. But is that encompassing? Does that change the problem? Is, are these some of the issues that ASU had embarked on the strike for? But I'm, I'm sure that we talk about this as we proceed in the course of the show this morning. Aviation fuel, one hour flight may hit 120,000 naira. One hour flight may hit 120,000 naira. I remember when you could actually fly from a city, from one city to another. It means of a flight, you could pay like 18,000 naira, uh, you know, 15,000 naira, but now it's a different conversation. Uh, you also have on the leadership, uh, quickly, illegal refinery, 10 feet dead in Abdiya explosion. It's also another rider and passport. Uh, the issue of passport insurance, online payment and appointment system yielding good results. NIS, CG Idris is quoted on that. These are the stories you find on the leadership this morning. Away from the leadership newspaper, let's slide on to the punch newspaper. The lead story this morning, Amy Philly heads uh, for court as a uh, Anger spread over presidential ambition hires Ozekome to seek constitutional interpretation amid rising criticism. APC chair confirms CBN governor's membership says he registered in February 2021. Aha. MFLA's action could compromise uh, bank's integrity, ex director and um, SANs are uh, quoted on that particular one. Just above the masthead of the punch newspaper, bandits mustn't have upper hand in Northwest again, says Buhari. Nigeria loses 1.22 trillion naira to deficit oil production. That's according to reports. Asu federal government disagree over planned meeting. Oh wow. Naira slumps to 595 to the dollar. Forex shortage persists. Aviation workers begin two day warning strike over poor welfare. Uh, well, it is really ironic and funny at the same time uh, because a whole lot is happening in that sector. First, uh, we heard of um, some um, flights shut down for today. Eventually, it was called off. And uh, just in the wake of all of that, aviation workers uh, begin two day warning strike over poor welfare. A uh, few queues uh, resurface in Abuja and neighboring st states. I thought we've heard the last of uh, this issue of uh, fuel scarcity. Will soon reveal emo killings uh, sponsors, says Uzodim. Graduate uh, stranded as Quara Poli NYSC mobilized imposter for service. Nigeria can't continue this way, says. Saraki, a whole lot of other stories, but let's just leave it at that for now on The Punch. Away from The Punch, uh, let's take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Federal government borrowings crowding out lending to private sector. 
interesting. Analysts say it's unhealthy for the economy. It's a rider underneath the board caption. And just away from the board caption, PDP presidential primary, Atiku Saraki Wike emerges top three aspirant. Buhari asks military to sustain operation against bandit in Northwest. Should the president always ask? I mean, <laughs> don't you have a duty to do? Um, Ngige misled Nigerians. We still on strike. Research workers are quoted. INEC chairman cannot join presidential race. This is according to the commission. And former PDP state chairman tackles party's National Working Committee over attack on Emethili. Why the Ninth Assembly stands out from previous assembly? Really? <laughs> Ahmed Lawin is quoted on that uh, just before we move away from the Daily Independent. Aviation crisis, airlines succumb to pressure and calls off planned shutdown of operations. There's no corruption in supply chain of aviation fuel. Uh, this is what unions quoted to say. Reps cancel planned emergency session to meet stakeholders. Author on Zerba's death, a big loss to Nigerians, says Uzadima. And Buhari attends conference in decertification, degradation in Abidjan. These are the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper. And finally, we have um, the Nation newspaper. The main headline for this morning, the APC slams nine conditions on presidential aspirants, contenders but from taking party to court. Aha, uh -huh. inflation to hit seven months high at 16.2%, interest rates to go up. Aviation workers begin warning strike, airline shove flights Court. Senator Nzeribe dies at 83, as more strike extension, protests in cities, VC's wives shift poly. Petrol scarcity back in FCT, oil marketers seek payment of 100 uh, billion naira debt. Federal government investors draw down 850 billion naira on claimed dividend. Uh, dividends fund. Supreme Court uh, verdict on 17 oil wells not final, says uh, Ibo government. Those are the main stories on the nation newspaper this Monday morning. All right, we have Okpenabon Kataria, who's on standby. He joins the conversation as also a public affairs analyst. Okpenabon, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Messi, once more. Justin, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. So let's start off with the leadership. I mean, the, the caption talks about uh, the party primaries and the fact that you have civil society organization kicking against aspirant using state resources. Uh, but is there any, are there mechanisms, you know, to check the excesses of this aspirant, especially those who are occupying public office? Well, um, the civil society organizations are not happy with it because uh, it's as if you're placing the aspirants in office in advantageous positions, unlike the other aspirants. You're going to use the government check, you're going to use, like Wally, you use the private check, the presidential check, and so on. You have your security paid for by the state, whereas these other aspirants that are also contested don't have those privileges. And that's why the CSOs are not happy. Uh, in civilized life, like in America, you have the president using the presidential debt, but he's actually paying for it. Once he's not going to fly, for any official reasons, the president pays for the presidential debt. That's what happens in civilized life, especially in America, which is the natural place of our democracy, of our presidential system of government. I don't know of Britain, I don't know of uh, any other country. But I haven't said this, I mean, the Nigerians and the middle of people believe that it is unfair and unjust because one person is placed or given more advantage than the other. Uh, but life itself is not fair. I don't think that should be our problem. Probably they're also looking at the, if they cost. Because you use uh, each time you fly, of course, they're going to maintain the debt, they're going to pay the pilots, the ground rents, and all other rents and charges to be paid at the expense of the state. So you're eating deep into 
the finances of the state, where well, I mean state, I mean the government. Uh, so a lot of people believe, no, that compared. This is your private life. This is your private ambition. It really has nothing to do with Nigeria or Nigeria. So that shouldn't be the case. That's why they're complaining. But then, you just have one president at any point in time. You have one governor at any point in time for your state. So that shouldn't be the major problem. Yes, I agree with that, but I don't think that should be an issue, so to speak. If we can address that, fine. But what we should concern ourselves with is to get a president that will be in office in the image of Nigeria. And will also, there are so many presidents that will tell you, I don't even want my security votes. Not in Nigeria, please, when I talk, I'm not talking about Nigerian governors and presidents that will come on there to say, we don't accept security votes, I decline my security votes. Meanwhile, you're taking the security vote and more through the back door, stealing, placing the treasury drive, and you say you don't want security vote. We are not being deluded by such nonsense in Nigeria. Any governor or president who tells you he's not interested in security is a big fat liar because he's stealing through the back door. So he just wants to deceive Nigeria. So, but if you like that, you see people tell you, I'm not interested in this, I don't want this, I don't want that. Because they are sincere, they are there in the image of their, their people. But uh, I don't think that should be an issue for now. It can be idea. What we should concern ourselves with right now is getting a leader that will navigate us through the stormy waters to a point of uh, relief. Why should we not? Why should we not concern ourselves with that? I mean, you already would. No, I said for now it's not. You see, uh, the problem we maximize the minimum and minimize the maximum. Why am I saying this? You complain, you remonstrate, you, you shout. You can't change it now. That's why right. we should concern ourselves with a leader that will think like Nigerians and act like Nigerians. Because for now, no matter what you do, there is no law prohibiting it. That's the thing the president for me. There's no law. So let us get a president that will act in the interest of Nigerians, even without a law. And we must not have a law on everything. No. But if you have a good leader, morality will take place. And he will know that what he's doing is right or wrong. So that's why I said, I'm not saying that it is wrong for them to criticize the use of uh, government resources for private reasons. It's strictly for private reasons. Ambition is strictly private. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I said, let us for now focus on how to get a leader that will address these issues that they have just used. It's too late. Are you going to tell Mr. President not to use it? Are you going to tell the ministers not to use it? Even right. if the presidential, they are going to use their uh, uh, penalty from the ministry. No, but, but I, I mean, we, we, we probably might just agree just before Justin comes in now. But um, I remember we had a conversation just last week with Shane, uh, Senator Shewusani, and he talked about uh, the fact that the reason why we constantly have two political parties dominant, despite the fact that you have uh, registered political parties for the elections, 18, well, you seem to have. And, and he doesn't even think that we might just have a thought force emerging. So we're going to go in the same circle. It's because of the money back politics. And we can't take that out. So a system we're expecting to produce a president, that president, where would he come from? He probably would still come from a system where you have money doing the talking. Uh, and, and, and that's what it is. I, I, I completely agree with the tenor of your argument but not with the submission. Now, you know, a lot of people, let me say this now, criticize the APC government. I also criticize the APC government. But let us make this distinction. You know, that's why I keep talking of investment leader followership. Let us make it. a lot of people in APC today were in PDP. And a lot of people in PDP were in APC, including their national chairman. Now, the question really has nothing to do with the party. Because in Nigeria, the parties don't have ideologies. So the issue has to do with the individual. You can have a PD and APC government, like Guarin's own, that has performed abysmally. And you have another APC government that will perform kindly. You can also have a PDP government that will perform abysmally. And another PDP, it depends on the individual. 
It really has been right, when you talk of party, you are talking of civilized crime. No, what did say? You are talking of civilized crime. Open up the show we can actually cover much so more. So the let's issue move of on. money back. It depends on the individual. That's what I mean. Open up, so we need to move away from this now. Yes. All right, let, so let's, let's, let's move, move on so we can actually cover much ground for sake okay, of time. Right, I don't even okay. have so much time on this particular discourse. Um, um, Amy Philly has been, uh, that's the central bank governor, Godwin Amy Philly has been in the news for quite some time now. First of all, it was um, the fact that um, um, farmers were the ones uh, who uh, funded his, um, or who, is, who are urging him to run. Uh, right now, he's heading to court uh, as um, anger is spreading over the presidential ambition. He he has uh, gotten the representation uh, from, uh, you know, SAN, uh, that Mike um, is Zuckerman trying to seek interpretation. But let me get your opinion concerning all of this. Uh, people have talked about legality versus morality, and um, should the central bank of uh, governor be running, you know, for the president in 2023? If a sovereign minister can run, why not the governor of central bank? That's the truth about it. Why not? Is it because he's the governor of Central Bank? Maybe because he has what so much that for he's the, responsible. What is, I know, I understand you. Know, what is good for the people of America? Look, even in America, the judges are appointed based on party line. That's why I keep saying it depends on the individual. They are appointed based on party line. Judges are voted. Now you're saying because he's in charge of the nation finances. A governor is not in charge of the state finances. Now, all you need to do, that's why you have the EFCC and so on, is to prove it. Where did you get 100 million naira from? And so on. That's why you have the EFCC. Is it not in Nigeria? If the law says, as a civil servant, you ought to retire or resign your appointment or resign from office 30 days to the time, because as far as I'm concerned, that is what is subsisting. That of the Electoral Act, I mean, the court has not applied that. It's if, a if, if court of appeal, so as far as I'm concerned, there is no law on that. For now, it is what the Constitution says. This is 30 days. When the remember is 30 days. All he needs to do is to retire, resign within 30 days. It's as simple as that. But the CBN governor does not deny him the right to contest. If you think he's going to use the nation's resources, you have the ESC to prove it. That's what they should do. Because but if the minister contest, why would the governor come? Why would the CBN governor contest? Because the CBN governor is trying to the finances of the country. That's wrong. I don't think so. I sincerely don't think so. But don't you I think, think uh, you know, because, the, minister, uh, the minister of finance will also contest, and the CBN government should not. Contest. Shouldn't they all be resigning be, as it is right now? Even Sorry? if shouldn't they all be resigning as they are declared? Declare That's what I'm saying. Election. That's what I said. I said yeah, because, if uh, the law says, mm. if the law says they ought to resign, don't forget we are not talking about the electoral act. You know, like I said, we're talking about, about the I constitution. Said, the mistake the national assembly keeps making. Before you amend any law that is in the Constitution, you must first of all amend that. Before you come up with any law that is, is provided for already in the Constitution, you must first of all amend that aspect. Because every other law is inferior to the Constitution. And you have lawyers in the National Assembly. Why do they keep making these mistakes? If you don't amend the Constitution, every other law is completely useless. To the extent of that inconsistency. So the constitution says 30 days. The election act is saying something else. As far as the lawyers and the judges are concerned, the election act is rubbish. And it's in a test. They would have amended that constitution first. So for now it is 30 days. Because there's a subsisting judgment that there are no render that election act ineffective. So it is 30 days that we know until the court of appeal decides otherwise. So I can't tell you it's bound by the 30 days. It's as simple as that. If you talk of morality, it's a matter of subjection and perception. If the finance minister can contest, why is the next thing contest? And you see this issue, even you talk of government, also because those of the they are voted in government, the president was voted in government. You say appointees should resign, but the governor who is in charge of the finances should not resign. I mean, it is contradictory. The president should not resign. You say it will need to consider crisis. I mean, when we are, we have to balance this issue. There yeah, are much we respect the minister still. If the minister can steal a hundred million naira, for example, the president can steal one trillion dollars. He's in charge. But you said the minister should resign, the commissioner should resign, but the governor should remain in office. 
I mean, an illegal pundit must sit down and think of how can I tell this issue. Because it's also unfair. All right, as we move on. If everybody should resign, then everybody should resign. Now, the other one was voted for, one was appointed. That is not the issue. What I voted for appointed, the, what they are trying to cure, what the, the ill they are trying to cure, is influence, using official influence mm. during the election. That is just what they are trying to cure. All right, well so, noted. So, um, well, one would just be questioning. It's not that I'm expecting... Uh, you know, your reaction at this point, because we're moving to another uh, focus right here. But the question would be, shouldn't we have aspirants, people who want to become president and governors and become lawmakers, understand that there's a law already? And if there's a law that states you shouldn't do X, Y, Z, then you should respect the law. Should we always get into all of this argument? Don't, shouldn't we get to a point where we have um, aspirants being responsible without having been to be poked and pushed around. It would be a conversation for another you. day. But l I, let's look I at agree with you, Messi. But don't forget, the law says 30 days for now. Because the law that is constitution the Constitution are not the electoral act. The but, law says 30 days for now. But, but, but let's move away from that now. Asu ends warning strike and decides next line of action. We probably also have reports saying that Aksu might just be embarking on an indefinite strike. And just uh, recently, we also saw um, some students taking to the streets uh, in different parts of the country protesting and saying that uh, government, you know, Asu is being paid, these lecturers are being paid, uh, you know, government is also earning salary. By the end of the day, the students are the ones uh, losing out on this particular one. What are your thoughts? Do you think that ASU should tilt the, the, the path of embarking on an indefinite strike? Uh, what do you think should be the next course? You know, I, I told you, ASU, this ASU members and executives are just politicians. You know, I've always said this, they go on strike when their pockets are dry <laughs> and call up or suspend the strike when they are being given some money. That's what is going on. But, but there's no tentative. If you, want to, if you want to embark on this track, I listen to you, your discussion with Justin. If you want to embark on this track, embark on that track, until the issues are resolved, and if you can bring out a hundred million dollars to buy from, like he did is doing now, I can't comprehend why you cannot address the absolute issue. If you're embarking on the strike, and the strike will last for three, four years, as painful and as sad as it is, embark on that strike and let it last for two, and the issues are addressed once and for all. A situation where you gamble with the future of our children cannot be accepted. These ASU people, ASU officials, are politicians. They are businessmen. Once their pockets are dry, they increase the pump price of petrol. And they don't have any money again. They cannot afford the petrol. They come together and say, that, let's go on the strike. One is strike. The government will invite us. They will give us some money and we'll suspend the strike. When again we have an issue, we can't pay our price to UK, we'll go on another. Complete nonsense. If you are going on a strike and the very reason for which you are back on that strike has not been again, why would you suspend the strike? Why would you call up the strike? Then why is back on that strike in the first place? So it's completely useless. So as far as I'm concerned, you're going to get a years and back on that strike for two solid years mm. until these issues are addressed. And when you call up the strike, you call up the strike. Forget this warning and no one is like, oh, sometimes it is another way. You know, it's like a, a woman who is trying to, she wants what she wants from a man. And you know, uh, I will not give you that. <laughs> Let me leave those things. But you know, I don't have time to say. That is exactly what Ash is doing. That is what Ash is doing. Playing with the future of our children. Otherwise, is this today Ash has been going on track? This is very Ash. How many times have you gone on track? How many times have you gone on track? What is track to call up? This track to call up? Two days track to call up? They are all politicians. But yeah, Dr. Nabangutaria, the the ASU strike is not just totally, I mean, the reason that they have been backed on this strike, apart from the fact that, you know, government needs to pay some money, it's not about the money. They're also talking about the payment system. I'm sure that you're also in the know of the IPPIS and the UTAS. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, So, so yeah. that's also a bone of contention, not necessarily because you're saying that 
they probably were broke and now maybe they have gotten some money and I mean that's you saying. No, for whatever for whatever reason, Messi, the point I'm making is for whatever reason, for what the point I'm making is for whatever reason, let that issue be addressed once and for all. Okay. You can't go and try because of uh, the, the, the ICPS or whatever it is. Tomorrow you go and try because uh, your, your office is not well funded. The day after you go and it must be wholesome. If you're going on strike to come up with all the issues, the address these issues, if they address the most important ones and you feel you're okay, you're satisfied with them, don't get back on any other strike. If they don't, remain, they remain on that strike until the issues are addressed. My point is this. Let the federal government satisfactorily address the issue. Not to my satisfaction, to the satisfaction of the ASU members. And once these issues are addressed, forget about strike. If these issues are not addressed, don't then continue with your strike. All not right, to call up today, tomorrow you go back, to call up next tomorrow, next no, It all makes no sense of it all. I understand no, all of that. No sense of it all. I understand all of that. So the, which, which leads uh, to the next um, question which I have. Um, stories uh, on the punch and some other newspaper. You know, the issue of um, fuel scarcity and fuel, <coughs> fuel queues returning after months of um, respite. Right now, we hear that uh, uh, there are that, that talks of um, debt. How do we ever wriggle, uh, or wriggle out of all of this issue? For months, uh, Nigerians, uh, you know, were groaning under the hardship of um, fuel scarcity. But from what we hear this morning, the fuel queues have resurfaced in Abuja and neighboring cities or states. You were talking about um, lasting solutions and um, strikes uh, being done and uh, solving all the issues once and for all. What do we do in this regard of fuel? Uh, my dear brother, it's quite simple. First, you have to sabotaging the system. The government is complicit. If well goes for 100 uh, naira per liter in Nigeria, you take it outside the country, it goes for about 600, 700 naira per liter. They make abnormal profit from it. You don't have checks. And so the people prefer to take the fuel out of the country than to supply in here. And the government is aware of this. That is number one. Number two, and the refiner is working. They are not working. This is a government that has been in office for seven years now. It has just one year. And the government promised by government to define it that they're going to work within six months, one year. What does that mean? They complained, they escalated the previous government from the outside. They got into office and suddenly realized the benefits of this uh, uh, racketeering. And they killed into it. It's as simple as that. The government is not ready to address the poor issue. They make a lot of money exporting the crude, refining it abroad and bringing it in to microscopic few who have their, their, their uh, how would I call it, uh, uh, cohorts in government. And you have a president that is not bothered at all because it is the government that is providing everything for it. Up to the air he brings, apart from God, it is the government. Up to the air he brings. So they are not bothered about the masses. So you find a lot of people exporting the fuel to neighboring countries where they make about 600 to 700 naira per liter. And they are not interested in repairing our refinery. We export the crude. How ridiculous. What sort of a country do I live in? We export the crude. No more our refinery. We export the crude. We find their import. What are the charges and so on? So that is why that is what is going on in this country. And that is why once in a while you have to sketch it. Because they send this fuel out, or they create artificial scarcity so that they can make more money. And that is this, this, this country is artificial, so that they can make more money. Because you must fire your debt. For those that are using this uh, smaller debt, you must fire your debt. You must drive your car. You must go to work. The hospitals must use them. So you create this artificial scarcity. Because when you have this artificial scarcity, then you make more money. That is what is going on in the economy. And the sad thing is that the most important is that the government is complicit and silent. Otherwise, this won't happen. This won't happen. Well, uh, quickly, uh, as we coast it down, um, you have on the Daily Independent uh, this part where you have the Senate President, Akbar Lawan, saying that the Ninth Assembly stands out from other assemblies. 
Uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, let's begin to make the comparison now. The Ninth Assembly and the previous Assembly. Let's even compare it with the Eighth Assembly, the one closely, uh, very closely. Uh, no, it's absolutely right. You can't take that away. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear yeah, you loud and clear. It's absolutely right. You can't take it. stands out. Completely stands out. The, the Ninth Assembly is a rubber stamp Assembly. <laughs> the Ninth Assembly is the Ministry of Lawmaking in the executive arm. <laughs> the United Assembly Commissioner or Minister, who a lot of who refer to as Senior President, said from the beginning that they are not going to confront the federal government, they will do whatever the federal government says. So the Minister for Lawmaking, Nigeria is referred to as Senior President, as said it for, and it stands out. Other assemblies confronted the executive in the interest of Nigeria. But our minister for lawmaking, who is the senior president, said no confrontation. So it's not it makes it unique. So I don't know why anybody will bother about that. But if you talk but if you talk of performance, it is the worst assembly whatsoever. But I think why they said it's unique, less confrontation. Less confrontation. Obedience. They are very loyal. So it is unique. Other assemblies are not as loyal as they are. So it is unique. Less confrontation. So why are you complaining? He's right. No one is right. And we should commend him for helping to destroy the nation for that by not being alive to their responsibility. We we'll commend them. I commend the Honorable Minister for Lawmaking in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm not a Malamu. I'm talking about the Senior President. Because it's like a family that makes laws. Right, well, so I commend the Honorable Minister for Lawmaking who is wearing the guard of Senate President. All right, uh, are we done with the segment, or can we just throw one in? Uh, uh, okay, let's see if we can just uh, throw one in as we wrap up. Uh, Opunabo, let's talk about um, the this caption on the Daily Independent, their the main um, story for this morning. Federal government um, uh, borrowings are crowding out lending to private sector. I need your reaction as we wrap up. Well, um, you know, I think when the federal government, the federal government has borrowed so much, we borrow for, uh, for everything we borrow. We even borrow to buy pants in the house. We borrow to feed the national rock. We borrow for everything. And it's definitely affecting the private sector. And uh, when the private sector is affected, whether I like it or not, the economy is affected. Because what sustains the economy is the private sector, not the government. You have the micro, you have the macro, it's the private sector. I want to borrow so much. For example, now I find it difficult. Maybe I say, let's say the good thing, that will go to China to get loan and will be given loan. Nigeria has borrowed all the whole money in China. So it's affecting the private sector. And that's why people are complaining. And sadly, most of these loans you get are, being, are, are not necessary. And they are not put into put them to use. They are being wasted. Completely wasted. If we had a leader that is prudent and judicious, we would not even go borrowing. I want to believe that we are also going to borrow to import, export the crude we have and also import, refine, import the refined products. We are going to borrow. We have a prudent government. So it's affecting the private sector and they are complaining. Because we are talking of, yes, the federal government might do the borrowing, but we are all Nigerians, and Nigerians are the ones in the private sector that will go to ask for this vote. So it's an issue. All right, thank you. Uh, indeed, uh, we need to sort out all of our issues and put our house in order. Our house being um, Nigeria, that is our country. A very big thank you to uh, Openabo Inko Tire, public affairs analyst, uh, for sharing your thoughts this morning. Thank you. All right, it's still with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We are moving away from off the press. So we'll go back this day in history and see what um, happened. We'll come back and talk about. Uh, other issues making the rounds in Nigeria. Stay with us. We'll be right back.